All right, so in this video, we're going to show you how to graph some common functions in Excel. Um, obviously, this is something that you can do very easily in your calculator, but sometimes you need graphs that you can actually copy and paste into another document. And so we're going to look at some common examples and then uh, show you how to set up how to make those graphs. Now, um, we're going to start out by choosing, we need a range for our X window. And um, this, again, this is something that you can update differently in the calculator, but here we have to explicitly determine it. So just for the sake of, of consistency for all of these graphs, I am going to go starting with negative three as my initial value, and then I am going to add values to that until I get to three. Now, another choice that we have to make here is the resolution. If we only plot sort of whole numbers, then our uh, graph is going to be very chunky looking, which is fine. If it's a linear shaped graph, then chunky is just going to be a straight line. But when our graphs get particularly curvy, then it's better to have more values than it is to have less. So I'm going to choose 0.1 as my increment that I'm going to use so that we plot a bunch of points. And the easiest way to do this very easily is to set up a formula where we take our previous value and then we just add how big we want that increment to be. So again, I'm going by 0.1. Um, if you if you're again, if you don't care about the 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 details, the you know, the smoothness of the curve, you could go with plus one. If it's a line in particular, that's pretty safe. And then I'm going to copy this formula down until I get far enough to have positive three as my outcome. There we go. Okay. So now my the graph that I'm going to build from this is going to go from negative three to three. All right, so now I want to put in a function. So I'm going to start with a simple function, a linear function, 3x plus 1. And then we're going to go from there, and we're going to change it so that we can look at some of these other graphs. Now, again, we're going to use the formula properties in Excel. The pieces that stay the same, we'll just type in. But then the x value is going to need to be updated every time we plot a point. And so we're going to use the cell reference in order to change that x value. We've created our formula for our 3x plus 1. It, Excel evaluates it. And then we're going to copy the formula all the way down so that it gets evaluated all the way. Now, one thing I noticed as I was scrolling, 0. Uh, this is a 0. <laughs> it, uh, this is a rounding error that happens when you you represent decimals as um, binary things in a computer. Um, that e to the negative 15 means that there's 14 zeros after the decimal place before you get to the one. This is zero. All right. And then in order to just make our graph, we're just going to select from the recommended charts. We can choose either a, a scatter plot, which will just plot points each time, or we can choose a line graph, which will make the dots look a little bit more connected. If we want different options, we can, for instance, choose a line graph with the dots. But when you when you go into these other um, these other uh, functions, you want to make sure that you do not have two lines. We want one function, one line, x is in one axis, y is in the other axis. So if you stick to the recommended charts one way or the other, then that will, you will usually get the correct version of the graph. And let's zoom out a little so that we can see this a little bit more easily. OK, so this is our graph of f of x, and it's just that straight line. Now, one advantage of, again, being able to do things in Excel is once you have all of this set up, then you can change your formula, and the graph will automatically update. 
So let's try looking at our second function, x squared minus x. I'm going to change my formula, x squared minus x. So again, everywhere there's an x in the equation, you need to put a cell value. And then you have to remember to copy the formula all the way down the column. And when we go back to the top, our graph has been updated. What about x cubed minus x squared? x cubed minus x squared. And again, it at first only updates the one value, so the graph looks weird. Copy it down to the bottom. And then the graph will update. So again, a cubic function looks a little different than a regular quadratic function. What about e to the x? Now, e to the x, um, the e part of it is actually the one thing that's kind of difficult is that you have to use exp for the e portion. but then you get that classic exponential curve. Now two to the X is actually going to look very similar, but you don't have to use a special e uh, EXP function. You just type two to the X and then again, copy that all the way down. And again, the curve has a very similar shape, but you don't need that EXP. E is a special number, it's 2.718282, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's transcendental, it has a special designation and you can't just type E because then Excel will yell at you. Um, it won't understand. So EXP is how we get around that. Uh, for natural log, LN of X, uh, if you use LOG, then and I'll talk about that error in a second. If you use LOG, then that's assumed to be base 10, but you can also change it to other values. Now, log cannot be defined for negative numbers. So you get this num error. And when you get a num error, the graph is actually going to plot that as a zero. That's not good. So in this particular case, um, what I can do is I can actually change my initial starting value and have my entire list of values update. So let's actually just change this to say 0.1. My entire list of values updated, and now I have a nice log graph without that crazy error. Now, if I want to go back to absolute value of x, I'm going to Put, reset my, my initial value. Absolute value, so again, you can't use the vertical bars. You have to type in A, B, S, and then your X. And then you get your nice V-shaped graph. And the very last one that we're going to look at is the square root. And the square root has a similar problem to the log in that it's not defined on negative numbers. And you can't leave these errors on the graph because, as I said, the graph will plot them as zero, as though the cell is blank. And the, the square root, no more than the, than the log, looks like this. So the way that you do that, again, is you reset the initial value log is not actually defined at exactly zero. So um, that's why I started at 0.1 before, but the square root of zero is zero. So I can safely start at zero. And now I get 
my nice square root graph starting at zero.